friends, in today's video, I'm going to give you a bit of a tour of my shelves of early readers, and then I'm gonna pull some of my favorites out to give you a closer look. This here is my first early reader shelf. There's a second one that's a couple shelves down on this bookcase um, because I didn't mind little hands getting to those, but I don't want little hands getting to this. So that's why they're separate. Let me go ahead and show you everything that's on here. This little set of drawers holds my sound objects. I've shown this in other videos. Um, and if you're more interested in how I use them, I will link to my first Montessori reading video here that explains them. These are little baskets and I think my sister got me this. Um, little baskets and boxes to put sound objects in for when we are doing activities with them. Um, and then I have some grammar games. So this is, these are Montessori grammar um, symbols up here and a grammar game here. And then these, I just, I tucked these up here because I didn't want them to get hurt. These are just, um, I don't consider these early readers, but they're little Beatrix Potters that were from my grandmother. So they're tucked up here. Okay, so let's move on to the actual early readers on this shelf. Um, these are my earliest early readers, if that makes sense. So if you think a lot of people know what the Bob books are, I think of these as the equivalent to the Bob books, but I, I enjoy them a lot more. Um, so these two are level one and this is level two in, in the Now I'm Reading series. I think they might have a level three too. I don't actually have that. But let me just give you, um, I really enjoy these. These are going on my favorites list because it goes through by different phonograms. It's really simple. Again, just like the Bob books, you're going to work up in difficulty. So they start off with the phonetic sounds. If I was doing it with a child, I'd pull the book out, but they're all in here ni nicely, so I'm not going to. You can kind of see how this, how this goes. So they're going to need to know a lot of phonogram sounds, but they're, it's all, it's all phonetic. No, like there's no really crazy, no like sight words and stuff in this one. And it goes through the different um, like early vowel songs, like the, that's the ah, the ah, the i, eh, and such. Um, and these are all, ooh, these are all animal themed. And then it comes with stickers that the kids can put in when they've read it. And um, I think my daughter got a little excited and put a bunch of stickers in here. I've started writing the child and the date now because I have had more than one go through these. Um, we'll see. I might have to get from low on stickers. I might have to get a new set for the younger two, but we'll see. Um, so yes, I have this. The big fun one has more sports things in it. So I did pick it up when my son was learning to read because he's really into baseball and other sports. So, um, you can see it's still animals though. So there you go. And then the next level up is just exactly what it sounds. It's still not, um, super hard. I consider these still, I think somebody was in here and didn't put these back. Let me just pull one of these out. Um, it's obviously a little bit harder. Um, more more double letter phonograms and such. But I do think it's a nice step up. And I'm always doing these with the children. I mean, if they want to come back and do them on their own, they can. But um, this is a mess. I'm going to sort it out later. <laughs> I didn't know it was such a mess. Um, with this level, I'm usually doing it with the child. If they want to come back and look at it on their own, then I do let them do that. Um, but the first time they're reading through it, they're doing it with an adult. Um, this, okay, let me just explain this one here, this Thomas one and the Star Wars one. I have those because those are specific interests of my children. And I do think it's really good when they're doing something like learning to read where it, it really can be challenging for a while. There's a lot of sounding everything out and just a lot of practice of something that's really difficult that it, it's more encouraging and motivating to them if there's something they're interested in. However, I would caution what I found on these is because they're um, based on a particular series, they want to use the character from characters from that series, which makes complete sense. But I would say, especially in Thomas, the character names are very not phonetic and hard to read. So they're not my favorite. I still have them just in case I need like to use some to motivate a child, um, but they're not my favorite. The Star Wars ones actually has um, bold words that are the words for the child to read. So that might work better, but they're still not my favorite. So, okay. But let's get back to my favorites. These ones in here are definitely on the list. So there's several in here. The, I'm gonna start with these tiny ones. So these are the earliest set from Miss Rhonda's readers. These are called the mini books. And um, I just have a series of these. I think I got these at Montessori Services. I will link these and I will link everything I can in the description box below. Um, let me show you inside. Let's look at corn. Um, the, there's really just really sweet pictures. I think they're hand drawn. They look like they're colored pencil and it's really simple. Now, some of these words, these words are not all strictly phonetic. There's some blends and some trickier things in them. 
However, there it's a really simple book. And so it's really easy to breeze through one of these. So these are like when you're just getting practice and kind of working up uh, to reading more at a time. These are a good start. Then moving on with more Miss Rhonda's readers. I think these are sets like the next. I think these are two different sets that I have in here um, at different levels. And they're kind of mixed up. So, like I think this one's part of the second set. I think this one was from the earlier set. So again, there's Miss Rhonda's reader. They're Miss Rhonda's readers. And I think it's set one and two. And again, really sweet drawings. This is what this is. So again, I would, I think that they're definitely a step up from the now I'm reading ones. Um, some somewhat similar in some of them to the level two. Um, but these are a lot of these are like nature based. These are Miss Rhonda's readers are a Montessori inspired. I think she's a Montessori teacher. And so um, they're all like about nature and then things that kids would do just like the real, real world because that's at this age what Montessori's focused on. Um, so I didn't show you all of them, but <laughs> the fox does not get the rabbit in this one in case you were concerned. Um, I think this one is the next level up the otter. And there's just more, like there's more words in the page and some of the words are going to be a little more difficult. So I, I really enjoy these ones. I might have to go through and figure out to sort them before the next one starts reading with these. But my son has pretty much finished with these. My second, my second child. I've got two more to go. All right, now let me show you these. Um, I had shown these in a recent video as well, and I couldn't, I couldn't find them. I was having trouble finding them again. I think I bought them on Montessori Services. I'm going to keep my eye out and see if I can find somewhere to link these. Um, these are beautiful. These are by Joan Gilbert. And they highlight um, double letter phonograms here. And the stories are just lovely. And I would say these are again another level up because they do include a lot of double letter phonograms. And if you are following the Dwyer Montessori method that I outline in my Montessori reading videos, these are really good for once you've done um, many, if not all, of the um, double letter phonograms with your child. Okay, this is my last Rhonda's reader over here. And this is more of a chapter book. So this is set three. So again, another step up and there's chapters. So they even tell you here, the focus words. Here. And I really like these ones too. So the Rhonda's readers are great. If you get like all three sets, you're actually in pretty good shape for starting to read. I find my kids need a lot of reading practice, so I don't know that that would be sufficient for me. But um, yeah, they're they're a fantastic start. Um, I these aren't early readers here. I already talked about the Star, Star Wars phonics, but this is just like a fun word book that I got and a children's dictionary. So. We don't need to go through those. So we are two shelves down now, or three. There's two shelves in between, <laughs> in between them. And um, these, again, these can be easily accessed by little hands. Um, but I don't mind. Every once in a while I come in and kind of reset them. They do get a little messy. These three came with my Logic of English series. There's Doodling Dragons, Knitting Knights, and Whistling Whales. And it goes through the um, sounds and has, like, different words with those with that sound in them with that phonogram, I should say, um, <clears throat> here. I actually haven't used these a lot, but I just hold on to them and they just, they just live here. So then I have, these two are both sets from Usborne. This is the Usborne phonics set. Phonics readers, here we go. And um, these, so they are phonics readers and they do highlight some of the early phonics, but they also have a lot of other words in them. So I don't consider these like the earliest of the early readers. We definitely do them after we get to some other things. So here's Ted Sheds. This is one of the easiest ones of them. But just to give you an idea here. So it's not like the really, really early readers with just a few words per page and all phonetic. It's got more in there, but it does focus on a phonetic sound. So this one is eh for Ted Shed. Um, but this is a great set. And um, where my son is now, he's still reading through some of these. 
Then this one is the Usborne, I think it's called My First Library. They're honestly, they're a little hard to get in and out. So this one is out right now just to make it easier to get things in and out. So let's see you, show you the side here. My first reading library. I am an Usborne consultant. These will be linked below in affiliate links on my website. And um, the, this is one of the reasons that I am an Usborne consultant is this is a fantastic product. This is one of my favorites. Um, so it, it has leveled readers from one to 15. The earliest ones, um, there's two in each level. And then the orange, these are all, I've had them for such a long time, they're kind of faded by the sun. Let me see if I can, let me show you here first. Okay, so we've got like level one here. And one through, I believe, seven are um, joint readers. And by that, I don't know if that's the correct term for them, but but by that I mean they're the... Um, strong reader, like the parent in this case, reads these words and then the children read the bigger words. And so you're reading it together and that's really fun for the kids. It makes it more of a shared activity. You can have a more complex story going on. So that's really great. I really like these. And these are some of the earliest ones I use because as you can see with the words, well, there's actually no words for them on that one. For the words they have to read here, they are very simple and phonetic. Um, so it works its way up. Um, let me see if I can pull out one of these middle ones here. It works its way up. And so this one um, has more of the double letter phonograms in it. But it's really great practice. Um, my kids really like this one because they like magical things. Um, <laughs> And in the back, I should say, there's like puzzles, there's different things, activities you could do. We haven't really utilized this, but I do think they're great. If you wanted to do that, it would be a good test of their reading comprehension and practice. And then as these get higher, they're no longer joint readers. Ah, the one downside is they're really hard to get out of here. And theoretically, I could just take them out of the box, but I really, I like them in the box. Okay, so here, here by this point, they're reading it all themselves. But I really, I really think that the way that these move up is great. This is 11, right? Yes. And then you've got the orange here. They were, they were orange before they were all faded. And these are all basically the same level as each other. And these are like a next level up from the earlier ones. Wish, wish, that's a good one. A lot of these are based on Aesop's fables and fairy tales as well. And then you have the pink ones. Let's... Well, this one's a little tricky because it's got the word Gloucester in it. And who knows how to pronounce that? But Dr. Foster went to, I guess it's Gloucester because it rhymes. I believe this is a rhyme that they just turned into a book. So a lot of them are things like that. So you've, you've got like the tortoise and the, the eagle, clever rabbit and the lion, the magic melon, the daydreamer, the genie in the bottle. So lots of fun books in there. Again, this is one of my favorites and I highly recommend this. It is a little pricey, but it's worth it. Especially if you're a homeschooler, I just think this is a really good investment in teaching them how to read. Okay, putting this one back over here. This is Little Miss Muffet. Okay, and then I have a couple of the Elephant and Piggy books. I keep meaning to get more of these. These are Mo Willems. Um, and they're just really fun. My kids enjoy them. Some of the words are are easier than others. There's some harder words in here. Um, this one's actually very simple. So, yeah, like grown up, that's a little harder. Yeah, those are nice. So the rest of these are somewhat in order, but not completely. Let me move you over a little bit. These ones here are a little bit more difficult. Um, but they were a fun Usborne Beginners set that came on animals, and my kids love animals, especially my oldest has always loved animals, so I thought this would be great for her. Um, but you can see it's definitely a more advanced level. There. Uh, it does have great information, though, and I have pulled these out. If we're doing, if any of these are relevant for, like, a unit we're doing or something, I will read these to them as well. We then have Cowgirl, Kate, and Coco. I think I'm missing five here, but... Um, my, we used to take these out from the library all the time um, when my 
daughter was learning how to read and then we moved and her current library doesn't have them so I ended up buying them and these are like a really really early chapter book like one of the earliest chapter books that I've seen and just show you here that's what it looks like this is the level my son actually just finished this one here um, this is around where he is now so that's the Cowgirl Kate and Coco series um, I find it kind of similar. It might be a little more difficult than um, like the Biscuit books, um, other early readers like that, that you can find. Um, okay, Narwhal. So these ones aren't necessarily easier than the ones over here, but these are series, so I have them together here. Um, this is kind of a, this is like a graphic novel-ish thing, like an easy graphic novel. There. Okay, and then... We have all these series here. There's like I Can Read, um, Step Into Reading, More I Can Read. And I've kind of organized them by the levels they say they are. So we've got like one and two. There's a lot of Wild Kratts one and level two here. And they, my kids really like the Wild Kratts. And then I've got some level three here as well. And those, to be honest, with the different series, it's like they're not necessarily matching. I think they're all on the more difficult side. Like it's, it really, it really varies. We have, again, we have Ranger Rick, I think. Um, a parent, I think a grandparent brought, bought my kids the series again because they know they like animals. But I wouldn't call this, this is like I can read beginning reading one. And I wouldn't call this level one if, <laughs> if I was doing a reading program, to be honest. Um, but this is the level that this is, essentially. So they're all kind of similar. It really depends on the book um, in here. And then we have more. We have some Star Wars ones because my son loves that. And then as we move farther over in this direction over here. Um, so over here we have some earlier chapter books and easy graphic novels. This is Ruby Red Shoes, um, which I think is actually, it's got less words on the page than some of the other ones. It's really pretty though. Um, but it's got some difficult words in here and um, small, small text. Um, so I don't think this is like a super early one, but I just wanted things as they progress um, to be able to pull some of these out. I think after doing the early readers, these are kind of good beginning, beginning non-early readers, if that makes any sense. I think this one's a graphic novel. Yeah. There. Okay. A couple notes I wanted to make just to explain some things. I There are early readers that come with our Logic of English program, and I keep those in a separate basket, and then I pull out the ones that are necessary for the lesson we're on. And additionally, how I do it with my son currently is he has his school basket that a lot of his individual schoolwork is kept in. And what I'll do is I'll pull out a couple reader, a couple of the early readers from over here that I feel like are the next level up for him. And then he'll choose and read through those and then I'll do that again. And if he really wants to read something from in here, he can always come and choose one as well. This is not by any means off limits, but I find that's the best way to keep him moving on things that are the next level up and a little bit of a challenge for him, but not so hard that they're going to be discouraging. So the ones I would most highly recommend starts with the Now I'm Reading series. Those you can jump right into once your child knows most of the single letter phonograms. Then um, the Miss Rhonda's readers are fantastic and the Joan Gilbert series, although that's a little hard to find now. And then the Usborne series, especially my first library, that's my preference. Um, if you had to choose between that and the phonics readers, I would definitely go with my first library. And you could do that separately without the other ones I just mentioned as well. I just like to have more options for my kids so they get more practice reading. I think that's really the best way to learn to read is just to practice, 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 along with having a supportive adult or stronger reader around. When I was in a Montessori school, when I was in second and third grade, I actually had a little buddy who was in the primary class who I would sit with and they would read to me and get their reading practice in with an older student. And um, yeah, we had like reading buddy time. So um, if you have older siblings, you could also utilize them for that as well. So it doesn't always have to be the parent or teacher. Then from there, I would just try to find things that are your children's interest. Some of these are probably twaddle and I'm okay with that. The point is to get them to practice reading so they become more fluent in it and hopefully build that love of reading. So far my oldest who's in fourth grade absolutely loves to read and I am fostering that and kind of sheltering that as much as possible and my son is still in the um, process of like that challenging time of just practicing, practicing, practicing. So yeah again uh, some of these 
probably be considered twaddle by Charlotte Mason purists and other parents, but um, I think especially at this stage, just let them read. <laughs> Thank you for watching, friends. I hope you are all well, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Do you? Is you? Mm, mm, X, mm, X. Um, what? What?